This is an introduction to static equilibrium. Static equilibrium has many real life applications. These include construction of bridges and buildings, preventing failures of such, sports, and many others. The first condition of static equilibrium is that the net force on the object is zero. Remember that net force is the vector sum of all forces acting on the object. The forces do not have to come in pairs, nor do they have to align with perpendicular coordinates. It is enough that the net forces in all coordinates that you set up are zero. The second condition of static equilibrium is that the net torque around any pivot point must be zero. Once again, the forces do not need to be symmetrically distributed. nor do they have to have equal magnitudes or align with the particular coordinate systems. This condition must be satisfied not just around the center of mass, but around any chosen pivot point around the body. The static condition requires that the object is stationary and not rotating around any axis. This is to distinguish it from dynamic equilibrium where the object could be moving at a constant velocity, at a constant angular velocity. We will now demonstrate static equilibrium on the simple problem of the seesaw. We start by drawing the free body diagram. The child is at one end, the adult is at the other. The seesaw beam itself has weight. There is a normal force by the pivot on our system. As a torque problem, we must set up coordinate systems, both Cartesian and angular. We choose a pivot point and create a table of variables for radius, force, and angle for each of the forces involved. We set up the first condition for static equilibrium. The net force 
must be zero. We include the forces in the positive and negative directions. We solve for the unknown and insert the relevant numbers to numerically get an answer. We need to satisfy the second condition for static equilibrium. The net torque around our pivot point must be zero. We write out expressions for the torque by each force. Note that the torque by the seesaw's weight and the normal force are both zero. We write out the expression for net torque. Remember that torque direction is already included in the angles from the table above. We solve for the unknown, being very careful with negative signs and angles. Insert the numbers and calculate the answer. Finally, we look back at our drawing to check that our answer is sensible. The normal force must hold up the weight of the system. The torque arm of the child must balance the torque arm of the adult due to the difference in their weight. 